yes okay good okay so uh, let's begin so there are lots of ideas about the who is god so there are different names of god some people say all, all almighty or allah so they see that you know lord is just um, you know he is all powerful almighty he has lot of all powerful then some people say there's a judai christian people say the lord is his name is you know they call it as jehova or they call it is this is the lord's formal name for them but still they are lots of uh, they are lacking lots of things details around the lord about what is his identity what is his qualifications qualities and uh, you know so many so many de- details are missing there so still it is not clear for even the, for them there are you know they are confused you know there are so many schools of thoughts are also within them that you know who is god then if you lo- look at the buddhism and then there is no concept of god at all they say everything is uh, void and their concept is that you just uh, develop your intelligence you awaken your intelligence or called buddha or you awaken your uh, you know insight and then uh, you attain a nirvana or a or a uh, stage where there is nothing you just attain that so the until at that time you just take birth and things like that so then in jainism there is uh, a concept called uh, tirthankaras and the concept is that you know they find up to 24 tirthankaras and now there is a mahavir is also one of the tirthankaras their idea is that is yes, you can also become the one of the tirthankaras or you can also become a god so in sikhism there is a, a concept called wahe guru i mean that their concept is that yes lord is wonderful lord is great wonderful lord the wahe guru means that it's wonderful so yes they they use the name of lord rama lord krishna and all those but still they are not sure that who is that specific god so like that there are so many ideas and if we come to the our uh, the culture of hindu hindu culture there are 33 karods 33 crores of gods so we can see that you know there is indra there is chandra there is surya there is shani the various planets and the vayu varuna agni if you look at that agni there are 48 types of agni and there are pava agni vidu agni and like that there are names there are 12 adityas there are 12 suns and there are eight vasus so so many varieties of uh, gods are there i mean they people are generally termed it as gods and also we we believe that uh, in, a, in a mother cow that all these gods um, lives there and they are very powerful they have specific functions to do and they are there i mean even you know we understand that uh, the you know if you look at even our body there are various demigods also resides in our body and that's the concepts of that and still it is not clear many people worship in different different ways that we can see that you know in in our culture as well and um, there is again there is a uh, you know when we worship that there is a panchopasana puja or pancha puja or this is called smarta puja so they generally worship five deities and this is uh, originally came out from the impersonalist or uh, you know mayavad philosophy and then uh, then they they have to worship something so they came up with the five prominent deities of these gods and that's uh, you know the uh, they worship shiva they worship parvati they worship durga or surya they you know they, then they they can worship their own ishta devata so they think that you know then they worship by worship that they can uh, gain prosperity and then avoid all the evils then they also i mean there are worshipers of you know navagraha and they in order to eradicate all the doshas you know people worship accordingly and some people very much uh, just exclusively worship and still they are not clear for their all idea is that okay so that i can live here in this world happily so these are the various ideas that there that they their worship and then of course you know there are lots of other areas of there is a temple for spider in kerala there is a temple for spider and they come and worship spider and their worshipable deity is spider and if you look at the in other places there is a temple for ants you can see that you know there is they come and they offer their worshipable deities ants then the very funny thing is actually then there is even temple for a bullet even jodhpur in in uh, rajasthan jodhpur there is a temple uh, for a bullet and they come and worship and their worshipable deity is bullet here 
So we can see that there are so many, so many, um, you know, mothers and various ways that people worship because of they don't know what what is uh, who is God, what is the real worshipable deity, and then we have other isms, and there is Shaivism. Shaivism means their uh, prominent um, god is Lord Shiva. Then Shaktism, and then there's a Shakti or Devi. Their prominent worshipable deity is Mother Durga or a Devi. Then, of course, Vaishnavism is there, and that is, you know, Lord. Uh, I mean, in many ways that they do worship Vaishnavism, but the prominent is they worship the Lord Vishnu. And then Smartism. Smartism means Martha. You know, they do worship these five deities, and then uh, they go accordingly. Then also we can say that then you know according to our scriptures, it says then um, how we can understand how we can understand these these concepts of the gods so or concept of how we can understand what is real truth or what is real knowledge. So according to the Vedanta, there is um, five ways. Uh, basically, this this knowledge. So we need to see that you know what is the real, how we can understand what is real knowledge or what is knowledge. So these ways that we can accept or we can conclude that, you know, there is some truth behind it. There is some, uh, you know, substance behind it. There is some condens behind it. So that is, the, that, is the, that is the real knowledge. So in this ways, there is a term called Prama. Prama is understanding real knowledge. So understanding, so there is a way that we can understand the real knowledge. So this is that we come to the um, conclusion of there is a Pratyaksha Praman there is a Shabda Praman, there is an Anumana Praman. So here we can see that the Pratyaksha Praman is, we see a rope. So then we understand that this is a rope, but some people misunderstand this. Some people misunderstand this is a snake. Suppose if we go in the night and we see a rope on the road or somewhere. So look at the rope, we see that, you know, this may be a, a snake. So our absorption, our understanding of that reality is not correct. So that is known as aprama. So many people are actually in this world in these categories of something we see and then still we don't get that the real understanding of it. This is for an example, a rope we see, but we see it as a, we take it as a snake. So like that in this world, there is real knowledge, but we don't get it. We don't understand it. That is the category of aprama. There are, you know, there are categories of the ways of understanding. So it's not real. It's unreal. So then we see a rock and then we understand or we take it as a snake. So we are afraid of it. Now we are agitated, anxiety, so many problems it creates and we go through it. So we can see that there are people around like that. Then we come to that Pramaya. So if you understand that, okay, rope is rope. And then we can see that, okay, the object of the real knowledge. So yes, this is a rope, of the, this is a rope. that's a real substance, a real knowledge of that. Then we can understand more on the ROPs and how it works, how it is useful for the people, how we can apply it to in our life and for useful purpose. So that's the real Pramaya. So there are, we have this Pramana or Shabda Pramana or the real knowledge, which gives us the real understanding. So which gives us the real understanding. That's called the Pramaya. If the substance, if the knowledge is right, that is known as Pramaya or the right understanding. Then there is Pramana. Pramana means to understand this knowledge. So it's not Aprama, it's not we, we don't use like utilize this. So in order to understand there is a Pramana. Pramana means tools and the materials by which we can understand the knowledge. So there is a Pratyaksha Pramana as it's mentioned that. So we can directly perceive and then there is a Anumana Praman, and then we can also understand some extent that, you know, it's maybe like that. Suppose for an example, if you go to the ocean, if you go to the, take the drop of water from the ocean, and then oh, wash, the water from the ocean is salty. So we come to the conclusion that Anuman, that to get this salt and their water is salty. Yes, some extent it is correct, but it is not completely correct. But if we, there are some places that even there is a pure, you know, the sweet water you get from the ocean itself. If you go to Kanyagumari, there is a temple there and they dig a well, they have a well there, which is actually came out from the ocean. And if you take the water from that well, it is completely pure. It's not a sweet water, it's a pure, you know, uh, sweet water. So we can see, so still we cannot completely come to the conclusion, but some extent it is, it's real knowledge. It's knowledge that you can understand that is the water of the ocean is salty. See, it's the salty. 
So that's an Anuman. Then the one Pramata, another concept is actually known as, and the Pramada, one who attained the real knowledge. So through this media, one who attains the real knowledge is known as Pramata. So our objective is that, that to become into the category of Pramata, not that like a confused or come into the misunderstanding or not clearly understanding what is what and what I'm doing, what is this my life and this is. So our understanding, our sole purpose is to come to the uh, real um, you know, situation of Pramata that is uh, attaining the real knowledge. Then uh, there is also, there are uh, various uh, ways that we can utilize ourselves uh, our intelligence for that purpose. And there are four category. Uh, there are intelligence in a different stage. There are four stages of intelligence. We say buddhi. Buddhi is, yes, we do have buddhi. We do have the intelligence so that uh, we, we say that, we understand that I am so and so because of we have this intelligence. Then the further advanced, advanced stage of intelligence is known as viveka or vivegam. Vivegam that we can discriminate things. Okay, like a rope is a rope and snake is a snake. So that comes from the intelligence. So that's come from the more um, intelligence that's called Viveka. So when you see a rope, it's a rope. And, but if you are not you know, utilizing our intelligence properly, and then that is you know, considered as like a snake. So then that is discriminating power. More discriminating power is known as Viveka. And then the more actually most intelligent or more intelligent stage is called as uh, Dhiman. Dhiman means you know, there you are very, your intelligence is very sharp. There you can decide quickly, you can tell quickly that if you hear something, you understand something and you can decide and you can determine that, yeah, this is correct. So there is no confusion. There is, so many people are in this world, they can come to conclusion very quickly, but some people are not in this world. So they are kind of confused or, you know, they cannot come to that conclusion quickly. They need to depend on so many other things and other text or tools to come to the conclusion. So some people are in this category of demon. You know, there is, we heard this name, name called Divan, who is controlling, who is, you know, this word come from the Divan, it's all come from demon, demon. And then Dio, Yona, Prachodaya, this is a state of higher intelligence. Then and another state of higher intelligence is known as, or the most intelligent state, or is beyond that the material concepts is called Prajna. So in the Bhagavad Gita, which we heard this word called Stida Prajna. Stida Prajna is the highest state. And in that higher state, we can um, see things beyond, which is ultimate, which is absolute, which there is no confusion. The people are very come to that kind of conclusion that this is it. This is the absolute. This is the real truth. This is the absolute knowledge. So this comes only when we purify and come to the state of prajna. So why I'm saying this, the, so that yeah, this is very important to understand that, you know, we, we confuse so many things, we confuse with so many understanding, we go with so many, so many um, textbooks and the books and the scriptures to find out this and this. But as it's mentioned that this, this, this state of intelligence is also within ourselves, instead of so much going here and there, just come to the real understanding, real knowledge and the real practices that we can come to the state that Krishna also says that in a Studa Pragya or transcendently we can situate in the transcendental situation that we all can understand this knowledge very clearly. That is a perfect knowledge. So these are the various ways that we can understand things. Then we can also see that there are uh, schools of thoughts, uh, philosophies are there. So in the, in the, in the Vedanta or in the, or generally, which is in the, um, Advaita or, or Mayava, the philosophy, there are various schools of thoughts are out there or the philosophies are there. Uh, so we can, there are people are understanding things in a different way. One is known as Nyaya, their logic. I mean, they see that, okay, there is some argument, there is some logic. And then, you know, they come up, they conclude from the logic that, okay, this is like this. Um, it's more more closer to the anima and praman. So they, they, they assume they, they come up and they logic, they argue. So what they argue with it, they have some knowledge, some base knowledge from the Veda. And then from that base, Veda, Veda, the base knowledge, they come up with an argument and logic, things are like that. So this is, but um, they don't really believe that, you know, Lord is a person, Lord has a form, he has a qualities and things like that. And they believe that God is not the cause of this material nature but the material nature itself. So the, the different schools of thoughts are there. 
So then who actually brought up this? Gautama, Sage Gautama. And it's also Aprama. Aprama means it's not a real knowledge. So we cannot take that. So because of this, not the real knowledge. This unreal knowledge. Like we see a rock and then we're thinking it as, we are taking it as a snake. So that is, the, that is because of this, this logical arguments. So then the next one is known as Vaisheshiga. Vaisheshiga means very specific. That means Vishesha. So how it is coming? Nothing exists before. It creates once it creates. Then it never ends. Changes to another. It defines the... So what is that? They believe that this came up with, uh, you know, the Kanada. Sage Kanada brought this uh, from this from this Vedanta philosophy or from the Vedanta. They brought up that. Yes, I mean, I understood this way and this may be the way. Again, this is also Anuma and this is also Aprama. This is not real knowledge. So this is as an assumption. And again, that's come up with the conclusion that yes, nothing exists before. But once it's, once it's created, that then nothing stops. It's been like that forever. And then it goes from one form to another. And then again, there is no specific um, idea. There is no specific or there is no concrete or absolute or the perfect way to understand the Lord and not define the Lord in such a way that. But we are all here trying to understand who is God. That's the reason I'm giving this uh, various, various ideas and the schools of thoughts. Then there is another known as Sangya. Sangya philosophy is, is, is called enumeration of material elements and its effects. So this is Kapila, Muni, not the, not the Kapila, the Lord, uh, the son of the, the Lord himself, the incarnation of the Lord himself. It's not that the Kapila, but there is a Kapila Muni came up with that there is no God, but everything is actually, there are base, there are some basic elements in this world. So everything is actually the permutation and the combination of these elements. That's why which is known as the Samkhya. And again, it is also a Prama, it's not a real knowledge. Then there is another school of thought is Yoga, Yoga a philosophy. The yoga philosophy is, their understanding is the body, mind, and soul are the same. So again, it is the Patanjali brought this and their, everything is around this body, mind, and soul is same. There is no difference. So they do the practices accordingly. And then again, it is not defining that what is the real God or who is God. Then another concept is known as Mimamsa. Mimamsa is actually, this is again, this is from the Vedanta. So there they are interpret the Vedanta or Veda in such a way that they can they come up to a conclusion with that interpretation. If I interpret this way, if I put some interpretation in this way so that I can understand the Veda. So this is called hermeneutics or the interpretation of the Veda in such a way that people can understand. Then there are various Puro Vimamsa, Uttara Vimamsa. There are, you know, there are schools of thoughts like that. Again, it is more better than other things, but they they understand that you know there is the Vedas are the the basic and the it, the eternal test and Abhorushaya eternal test and then there is a Lord there is a God and then they take that um, so then they you know again differentiate between you know there are uh, rituals and there are um, sacrifices and all those so they interpret accordingly and they take it accordingly but it's not again it's not a complete way of understanding the Supreme Lord. Then we can say that Vedanta. Vedanta is actually Veda Anda. Anda means the end of Veda. That's called Vedanta. Veda means the end of Veda. The Vedanta is actually compiled by Srila Vyasadeva. And that is, again, it is the essence. Vedanta Sutra from the Vedanta. There is a Vedanta Sutra which is compiled by, again, by Srila Vyasadeva. And then we can see that the Bhagavad Gita is the uh, essence of the Vedanta Sutra. So Veda is and the Veda, Vedanta, and then also Upanishad. And also, also we all know that, you know, Veda has three uh, um, categories. That is, you know, the um, Vedanta, then um, Upanishad, and then Bhagavad Gita. This is all the summarization. This is the, this is the essence or the contents of the Veda. So we know that Veda is the um, real knowledge. It's a, it's a, it's a pramat. It's a prama. It's a real knowledge. So it's the real knowledge. People took it in different, different ways. But we can see later, we can see that how the Veda is actually um, gives us the real understanding and the knowledge. Then we can see that there are a lot of Siddhandas. So, you know, we, we see around the world, there are lots of Siddhandas we can see. And there are with the prominent one, which is mentioned here, there is a Kevala Advaita Siddhanda. That means this is based on the Shankara Bhashya. And uh, here the Lord is impersonal. 
and then also jivas are god uh, material nature is illusory there is it's all mithya and uh, only brahman is the supreme and everything is brahman and then uh, this is they worship accordingly that in order to get some benefit they they took a form they put a form of it and they do worship that's called smarta worship but actually they, there is no form for the lord for the impersonal or this kaivala advaita siddhanta this based on the shankara bhashya or sharira bhashya then there is advaita siddhanta advaita in kaivala advaita siddhanta means it's exclusively then advaita siddhanta here is again there is no two and then soul and the supreme soul are one they do not exist separately so it is also mentioned that this advaita siddhanta means there is no two everything is same everything is one but there is the supreme is there that's the brahman is there he is the cause of all the causes that's advaita siddhanta or advaita philosophy then there is a vishishta advaita vada or vishishta advaita vishishta advaita which is again this is this brought up the ramanuja acharya and then uh, thousands of thousands years back then this is vishishta advaita is known as specific monism monism means you know believe in one god and that everything is again one and then that lord is vishnu so in the vishishta advaita ramanuja acharya believes that there is the supreme he is a brahman but he is he is known as vishnu so he put a name i mean um, the the known as vishnu so and he is ishwara he is the source of everything and jiva are subordinate to him so this is the vishishta advaita siddhanta which derived from even from the advaita siddhanta then there is shuddha advaita vada this is uh, vishnu sami and vallabha jariya then this is came from the sarvajna bhashya this is pure monism that means brahman brahman became a individual so there is individual but this is the brahman this is like you know uh, a light and there is a separate light from that light uh, it's like that so it's a, it's a, it's it's a brahman is there but the the individual soul is that the part of that brahman so it's it's a part of the brahman so then they uh, once the living entity is passed then they merge with that brahman so this is um, this is the uh, you know shuddha advaita vada then there is also dvaita siddhanta that means there is two that means the super soul the the brahman or the paramatma the supreme lord and the soul the individual souls are two they are separate but in qualitatively they are same and but quantitatively they are different so are separate individual these are actually brought by the madhava acharya and madhava acharya introduced that the supreme lord is actually the krishna the supreme lord is lord shri krishna the madhava acharya introduced that that's called daiva siddhanta all the living entities are is uh, you know separate um, and part and parcel at the same time then we can say that there is daiva advaita vada this is nimbarka acharya both deita and advaita so again it is further divided and then also yes uh, the lord is there the individual souls are there they are uh, one in one sense it's all same and then again it is different and uh, there are various differentiations there and their worship is different and they think like that and then there is ajindya bheda bheda tattva this is inconceivable oneness and the difference so this is chaitanya mahaprabhu 500 years back brought this uh, this 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 course of thought this 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 understanding is that uh, the lord is inconceivably uh, oneness everything is belongs to the supreme at the same time it's also different that we can see that in the throughout the bhagavad gita which explains the same so we'll so go further and see Uh, more details about uh, this this uh, this various uh, thoughts and schools like that then we comes to the you know stages of vaishnava sampradayas so based on this advaita and dvaita siddhanta vishishta advaita and dvaita siddhanta there are again then it's come to the real conclusion real understanding of the vaishnava sampradayas so in the vaishnava sampradaya this is dvaita based on the dvaita and then dvaita advaita then vishishta and then uh, ajindya bheda abheda tattva it all comes together here and here we can see that there is a vaishnava sampradaya and there in the vaishnava sampradaya uh, they 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 take it as the lord vishnu is the supreme there is a form there is an identity there is quality and that supreme lord is vishnu and he is the supreme and then based on that there is a brahma sampradaya that means lord brahma 
uh, gave this details about that who is the supreme that supreme lord is vishnu then madhavacharya also the madhavacharya then again further uh, and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and then uh, brought this point of the the supreme lord is krishna aradhya bhagavan rujeshanandana tanaya so aradhya bhagavan is the worshipable deity is the supreme lord sri krishna and the vishnu i mean there is no difference between krishna and the vishnu then sri sampradaya also this came this derived this the lineage of that came from the sri lakshmi um sri lakshmi devi i mean the way it is that the supreme lord instructed this knowledge to brahma so that is sampradaya is known as brahma then the supreme lord instructed this to mother lakshmi then that knowledge lineage came down that is ramanuja sampradaya then there is rudra sampradaya the supreme lord instructed this knowledge transcendental knowledge to the uh, lord shiva that is the vishnu swami is there then kumara sampradaya that is sanat kumara the supreme lord instructed this knowledge to sanat kumara that is the nimbarga acharya so this all same everybody has the same common understanding that lord vishnu is the supreme so now we can see that there is a brahma madhava gaudiya that we are belongs to that the the understanding of the the brahma imparted this knowledge to madhava acharya madhava acharya then uh, you know this this understanding of the supreme lord is also came down with uh, sri chaitanya mahaprabhu there you can see that the madhava acharya raising his two fingers this you know is like a v shape what is that mean two shape is actually yes this dwaita supreme lord is um separate from the individual soul he is the supreme individual soul is individual he always exists and but he is qualitatively same but quantitatively different so this this teachings are there that's brahma madhava gaudiya so then we see the come to the understanding okay there is always a question that is lord is supreme um, lord uh, lord is impersonal or uh, personal so this is known as the maya vada or brahma vada or then uh, personal there is a, you know the lord has a form so here let's see what is impersonal the, they believe that lord does not have any form lord is formless he is nirvikara he does not have any quality he is nirguna he is uh, nirakara uh, likes that there are so many ways you know people they they define that you know because of uh, their thoughts are their ideas are actually the everything is impersonal then everything comes from that impersonal to the personal then then also there is a understanding that lord is personal so lord has a form and qualities so then you know our scriptures very clearly mention that lord has ajindya guna so he has innumerable qualities he has inconceivable potency is and quality the guna swarupam and his form he has a form he has a lot of qualities then we also have a common understanding that all the humans are made up on the form of the supreme lord that's why we have this beautiful form of the human then the arguments of that you know personal or impersonal lord is personal or impersonal so the great acharyas and the great uh, devotees they are, they come to an, a conclusion uh, including madhava acharya sri chaitanya mahaprabhu they all come to the conclusion that yes lord is personal because of for an example there is we can give an example we know that the sun is there the sun rays are there so this sun rays that which uh, you know we cannot call hold of it but we know that the sun rays are there so we can see that you know this impersonal aspect of the lord is actually is yes, this is um, you know this is the lord's impersonal that or you know all all pervading aspect all his energy and is all pervaded there everywhere is this energy but we can see that this light is coming from the sun so if you look at that so how the sun come from i mean if the question is that if it is a personal or the form come from the um, no form then how the form comes like we can say that uh, ask this question how the sun come into the picture how sun came into the picture is the sun rays made the sun it's not possible isn't it we cannot come to a conclusion or we cannot come to the real understanding that the sun is made up from the sun rays it's not possible so but we can come to that yes sun rays is made up from the sun because of the sun exists with his form he has a nature he has quality so that sun rays um, came from the sun so with this conclusion that the devotees and the you know these scriptures come to the conclusion that yes the every form come from the form energy come from the energy lives come from the life so qualities come from the qualities so the nature come from the nature so likes that so there's a this this we can conclude that then lord has a form lord is a 
person who is he has identity he has uh, address he has qualities so we can understand from this lord is a person so then we can also understand further is yes, this is the ajindya bheda abheda tattva or dvaida advaida siddhanta that in the srimad bhagavad it is it is says that vadanti tat tattvam vidas tattvam yat jnana advayam brahme di bhagavat paramatme di bhagavan idi shabde that means the same supreme lord can manifest or uh, in a three different ways and he can be a brahman he can be paramatma he can be bhagavan so he can be formless as well so he can be form he can at a time he can he can he can have form so this is the one understanding the same times krishna can form at the same time krishna cannot have the form so as it's mentioned that the sun is there the sunlight we can see that it's a it's it's come from the sun so we also say that sun we go to the sun right today we go to the beach we say we we are under the sun we say it's a sun so sunlight is also sun in one respect so so we can see that so in the the same way the lord has a form lord has a personal form at the same time lord does not have the personal form that lord you know, does not have the personal aspect if not there then then the impersonal aspect that's called brahman he is pervaded everything is he expanded through his energies like uh, sun rays uh, you know the you know, the sunlight is actually coming from the sun and it's we all know that because of sun because of the sun rays right so also we can perceive we can understand that the supreme is there that with this brahman with this brahman nature then there is paramatma that is uh, he is also resides he is also resides in the localized aspect of it he is also there in uh, every living entity he resides in every living being his real nature is divine his real nature is divine and lord is also um you know the underlying nature of every living entity is divine and he also resides in every living entity and it is also potency is also also his potency then there is an another aspect called bhagavan bhagavan means yes, this is the real personal aspect of it and this is the uh, parabrahman the, the another stage of brahman is known as param param brahman that parabrahman is bhagavan then bhagavan is actually defined in such a nice way and that the definition of a bhagavan he is uh, aishwaryasya samagrasya veerasya yasasya shriya jana jnana vairagya vairagyosha chaiva shannam bhaga idingana that means he has uh, the bhagavan bhagavan has a quality he has uh, um, the definition of the bhagavan definition of the lord is in the vedanta sutra mentioned that lord is the source of everything lord is the source of everything there is nothing that we can subtract from it nothing can we can add to it everything is is complete he is nothing can you know he is he is source for everything everything we can so if he is a source for everything he is the ultimate of all the opulences so parashara muni um, you know describes that the lord bhagwan has everything so he is the he is known as bhagwan bhag means all opulences so then we can see that further then who is the supreme lord or parama ishwara or the para brahma so there is a big question now asked you know um, yes we can understand uh, from the the ultimate of ultimatum of that we can understand the who is the supreme lord who is god that we we need to rely on the veda and then another question is that you know yes how whom, how we can really understand the god from whom we can really understand from the god from the people around here or the people come with the lots of logics and uh, con- you know arguments and all is that the way we can understand from the law lo- understand the lord so srila prabhupada also says that and uh, in the one of the properties that we can understand lord only from the lord we can understand god only from the mouth of the god when the lord speaks then we can understand completely nobody else can say about his god that's why ajindya guna swarupam is very difficult to understand but one who has a uh, quality one who is qualified to understand we can understand but the perfect and the perfection of it that we can understand the god only from the god so we can really talk about god only from the god so when god speaks that is a perfection that's the absolute that's a complete so that's where the way we have to take it if lord says if the lord speaks we know that there is lord and when that lord speaks we can take it as it is and that's where the vedas come into the picture and the vedanta sutra comes into the picture 
and then the essence of the vedanta sutra is the bhagavad gita so here in the chaitanya charitamrita it is mentioned that the krishnadas kaviraj goswami chaitanya mahaprabhu is mentioning here that prabhu kahe vedanta sutra ishvara vajana vyasa roopa kaila yaha sri narayana brahma brahma pramada vipradipsa karana patva ishvara vakye nahi dosha e sabda lord said sri chaitanya mahaprabhu is saying that vedanta philosophy consists of words spoken by the supreme personality of godhead narayana in the form of vyasa deva so vyasa deva is the literary incarnation of the supreme lord and that vyasa deva is speaking about the supreme knowledge that the supreme absolute truth as is mentioned that it is it is prama it is prama it is prama means the real knowledge so then chaitanya mahaprabhu further says that the material defects of mistakes illusion cheating and sensory in- inefficiency do not exist in the words of the supreme personality of god so we can really understand who is the supreme lord from only from the supreme lord so this this conclude that also shri had mentioned that lord shri krishna is the supreme personality of god according to all the evidences of the vedas so we can understand that who is supreme lord who is bhagavad gita chapter 4 this is the first time so we are coming to the uh, bhagavad gita that means the lord speaks so we are going to hear from the lord we are going to hear from the mouth of the lord that's the absolute that's the perfect so here we can see that from the first verse of the bhagavad gita krishna says that imam vivasude yogam proktavan aham avyayam then uh, vivaswan manuve prahe praha uh, manuvar ishahuve brabhi abravi what is that means this i instructed this imperishable knowledge to the sun god vivaswan so this is krishna is speaking i instructed this imperishable knowledge to the sun god vivaswan vivaswan instructed to the manu manu instructed this to the uh, ishwagu then what happened uh, this further clear says, says that uh, you know then arjuna asking this question that uh, you know how is it possible o krishna that you know you instructed this to the sun god vivaswan sun god vivaswan around 120 million years ago krishna says that um, you know evam parambara praptam you know evam parambara prak prak evam parambara praptam rajashayo vidum sagale na mahada yoga nashta parantapa arjuna this is uh, i instructed this to the sun god vivaswan but due course of time this actually lost this knowledge then now because of that i am telling you this again so that is the fourth point sixth verse krishna is saying that although and then before that arjuna asked this question how can i understand o krishna that you know you instructed this knowledge to the sun god vivaswan 120 years ago and i understanding my understanding that both you and i are just born here and then you know i saw you you are you are seeing me i am seeing you and we just born out here in this world and then how is it possible that you instructed this knowledge to the sun god vivaswan that's where krishna is saying that arjuna although i am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates and although i am the lord of all living entities i still appear every millennium and, and my original transcendental form so this is a supreme lord is speaking that who is the lord that we are hearing from that the mouth of supreme lord that i am also although i am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates and although i am the lord of all living entities and i still appear every millennium after millennium in my transcendent original transcendental form then krishna then revealing himself and this is we are hearing from the mouth of the supreme lord this is the real knowledge supreme knowledge absolute knowledge so we can the the, the upper in the prama that means this is the real knowledge so krishna says that he is the supreme personality of godhead how he is saying that in the 10th chapter 8th verse krishna says that aham sarvasya prabhu madhag sarvam pravartade idu matva bhajande ma bhuda bhava bhavan bhava bhuda bhava samanyadah i am the source of everything and everything emanates from me see that so we saw that there are so many schools of thoughts and arguments and ideas and the logic and the philosophies and the various methods and the worship but none of this says that you know where is come from where this entire universe exists what is this energy what is this nature what is this cosmic world where is come from what is the origin of this so here krishna the supreme lord speaking very clearly 
and this we can take it because of this is a real knowledge so this is a rob i mean when we say rob it's a rob this is the real knowledge so aham sarvasya prabhavo matah sarvam pravartate that every i am the source of all everything and everything emanates from me then further krishna says that and krishna is the supreme father so there's a, there's a question that then where this all access where is all come from who is actually providing who is the father of all this so krishna further explains in the bhagavad gita 14.4 sarva yoneshu kaundeya murtaya sambhavadiya tasham brahma mahat yonir aham bija pradapida krishna says that it should be understood that all species of life or son of kundi are made possible by birth in this material nature and that i am the seed giving father so sula prabhu the rise that life come from the life so we can see that i mean there are so many other you know bogus ideas about the evolution and all but if you look at that in the real picture even million years ago that you know monkeys were there and the human was there there is you know cycle of yuga and yuga cycle and now you know the, the important fact the interesting fact is that now even science and all is all confused but they are finally they are coming to the conclusion of what veda says what bhagavad gita says what shrimad bhagavatam says they come up to that conclusion and i'm not taking time to that then that will you know go that the side not so then krishna further further says that pidaham asya jagadu mada dhada pidamagah vedyam pavitram omkara rik sama ejur evaja translation is that i am the father of this universe so it's everything comes from me though we can see that i am the father of this the mother the support and the grandsire bhagavad gita 9.17 krishna says this then further krishna is the most dear friend and krishna is the sugurdam sarva bhudana in the fifth chapter 29th verse krishna says that bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram sugurdam sarva bhudana he is a sugurd he is the most dear friend and in the 199.18 yeah, verse 9 chapter 9 18th verse krishna says that gadur bhartra bhubu sakshi nivasa sharanam sugurd sugurd prabhava pralaya sthanam nidhanam bijam avyayam krishna says that i am the goal the sustainer the master the witness the board the refuge and the most dear friend i am the creation and the annihilation the basis of everything the resting place and the eternal seed see that the one verse itself krishna is very boldly declaring and establishing that he is the supreme he is the source of everything he is the father of everybody every living entity is everybody comes from him we are all part and parcel of him mamai vamsha jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana manashastran indriyani prakrutistani karsha this is the 15.7th verse which explains like that all living entities are my eternal part and parcel krishna is explaining very clearly so this is from the mouth of krishna so that we can understand that you know what is and who is the real the supreme lord then the next slide is actually krishna is the supreme creator so everything is the supreme creator everything comes from him he creates everything he maintains everything he annihilates everything he sustain everything he is the time and there are so many bhagavad gita is explained so nicely about this wonderful transcendental knowledge and prakritim som avastabhya visrajmi puna puna bhuta gramam ivam krishtam avasam avasam prakritir vasat krishna says that from the mouth we are hearing this the all cosmic order is under me by my will it is manifested again and again and by my will it is annihilated at the end so then we can further say that echa bi sarva bhudana bijam tat aham arjuna nat tat asti vina yatsyan maya bhudam chara charam furthermore o arjuna i am the generating seed of all existence there is no being moving or unmoving that can exist without me and we always says that if lord is not there his potency is not there can we sustain can we exist so there are different schools of thought say that okay everything comes from the material and material creates but on the other hand think about that the potency which binds everything together and if it is not there can we exist is his potency that the lord he exists and because of him that everything everything is creating here in this world then further we can see that krishna is the supreme controller and we can see that in you know, ishwara parama krishna ishwara means the controller 
and who is that controller he is he who maintains he controls krishna is the ishwara krishna is the supreme controller and ishwara parama krishna sachidananda vigraha anad radar govinda sarva karana karanam he is the cause of all the causes sarva karana karanam he is the efficient cause he is the material cause from him all the causes all the karanas coming and from him everything manifest everything maintains everything happens and he is the cause of all the causes that who is that i worship that the primordial supreme lord govinda he is the he is the ishwara parama krishna he is the supreme controller he is the sarva karana karanam and krishna further says in the ninth chapter 90 this is the chapter is the most confidential knowledge known as ninth chapter of bhagavad gita the most confidential knowledge and how krishna is defining this con- most confidential knowledge rajya vidya rajya goyam pavitram idam uttamam this is the king of the knowledge excuse me king of the knowledge rajya vidya rajya goyam pavitram this is the most sacred idam uttamam uttama means you know that the most the sup- superior that is the supermost uttama there is nothing there is no other knowledge this is what is i mentioned early there is no other knowledge than this knowledge and this is one who knows this knowledge that we can attain krishna we can attain the abode of krishna so here krishna says that in the ninth chapter 19th i give heat and i withhold and send for the rain so we know that how this all manifesting in this world krishna is the cause of all the causes it come from him the heat come from the him and with a single fragment of myself i pervade and support this entire universe we know that you know we understand that his his potency that in the shisha he is holding this entire universe on his hoods and this magnetic energy this gravitational energy this electrical energy this electro ele- electronic energy this um, kinetic energy the thermal energy i mean whichever way you call it us is all the manifestation of has this potency that's why it is mentioned that right achindya guna swarupa he has inconceivable potencies and guna and qualities and also further it says that parasya shaktir vidvideva suyade parasya shaktir that the supreme energy that in the vidvideva suyade is manifested in various ways but it's all come from that supreme lord so krishna says that the whole the whole cosmic order is under me under my will it is automatically manifested again and again and under my will it is annihilated at the end so he is the supreme controller the supreme lord shri krishna then further krishna is say that krishna is the supreme maintainer so krishna says that in the 15th chapter of the 12th verse that the the splendor of the sun which dissipates the darkness of the whole world comes from me and the splendor of the moon and the splendor of the fire also come from me i remember that when one time we we had a bhakta rusha i mentioned that i didn't have bhagavad gita open i mentioned that the the light which we see here is actually the krishna splendor krishna's uh, you know krishna's potency and we say that okay sun fills the sun rays and sunlight here but what is that sunlight that which we see or with that sunlight we see it and then i said that this is from the lord supreme lord so one devotee was not very much convinced and said that how is that possible then i opened the you know this bhagavad gita that showed this verse and the splendor of the sun which dissipates the darkness of the whole world comes from me so this is this a light which also we see is the splendor of krishna and the splendor of the moon and the splendor of the fire is all is everything is krishna then you know we can understand that there are only two things one is krishna everything else is krishna's everything else is that supreme lord and that supreme lord has such a wonderful quality and then we also have that the portion of quality and the spa, you know some some portion of that quality and we we qualitatively we are also same with krishna so we get that that's why we move we do things we take we talk we remember we enjoy so many things we do because of the same quality is there in the krishna as well so krishna is a person same as you know like us or we are all like krishna right krishna has innumerable qualities innumerable potencies then lord krishna in the bhagavad gita further explains that i enter into the each planet and by my energy it stay in the orbit see is very clear we are hearing from the mouth of krishna and this is what is we need to understand then krishna says in the ninth chapter 10th verse may adyakshana prakrte suyade sacharajaram hedu nanena kaunteya jagat vibhari vartade krishna says this material nature which is one of my energies is working under my direction o son of kundi producing all moving and non moving beings 
under his rule his manifestation is created and annihilated again and again jagat vibhari vartade my adhyakshana prakrute suyade such rajaram the moving and the non moving everything is under my 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 superintendence my my direction so nothing that we can separate from krishna or we can independently or individually act that okay i am the lord i can but that is a wrong idea because of when we think that way then we are separating from krishna in 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 quality or in 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 a real um, sense so that's where this disparity comes between the individual and the supreme lord that is a disharmonious situation we should be always harmonious with the lord we need to understand that we should work according to the will of the lord our activity should be according to the will of the lord because he is the supreme controller we are not the supreme controller or we are not the supreme maintainer here further krishna is also his nature as he is omnipresent he is everywhere he can understand everything omnipresent means he is always present so krishna says that further i am the super soul o arjuna seated in the hearts of all living entities i am the beginning the middle and the end of all beings is also explained brahma explains this one advaita machyuda manadi mananda rupam adhyam purana purusham navayavanam cha vedeshu durlabham adurlabham atma bhakto govinda madi purusham tamaham bhajami brahma says that advaitam there is no two that means you are everything and you are the supreme you are the advaita and you are achyudam you are infallible anandam you are you know everlasting anantam eternal you are this very spiritual form rupa nadyam you are the original purana purusham and navayavanam you are still you are eternally you know very beautiful and youth and the beautiful and how brahma is saying that brahma so the supreme lord personally see you know seen personally eye to eye that krishna you know brahma so the supreme personality of godhead and krishna is omnipresent how it's also further explains that in the 15th chapter of the 15th verse sarvasya chaham kruti sannivishto i am seated in everybody's heart he is present everywhere he is he is everywhere i am seated in everyone's heart from me remembrance knowledge and forgetfulness comes madaka smrudurgyanam abohanam cha vedeshu sarvam aham eva vedhyo vedanta krut veda vid eva chaham and from all these vedas all this to be and everything in this world that we one thing that we need to understand is that that is krishna that is the complete vedeshu sarvam aham eva vedhyo and i am to be known in all this way this all the vedas or whatever is around is in this world that one person to be known that is krishna that is the supreme personality of godhead then krishna is omnipotent krishna says that there is no truth beyond me everything is rest upon me as pearls are strung on the thread lord krishna says in the seventh chapter in seventh verse madaka paradaram nyanyat kinchidast dananchaya mai sarvam idam prodam sutre mani ganaiva there is no truth beyond me see that it's krishna is speaking there is no truth beyond me everything rest upon me as appears a pearl stung on a thread and this is krishna is saying that there is no truth beyond him so he is the ultimate truth he is the ultimate truth so we we can the truth which we hear in this material world is relative one person truth is not the same as another person truth one person false may be truth for the another person is all relative in this world so then further krishna is the omniscient krishna says oh arjuna i know everything that has happened in the past all that happening in the present and all things that are yet to come i also know all living entities krishna knows all the living entities because of he is omniscient he has full of knowledge he is full of chit potency he has full of knowledge that's for an example is mentioned that arjuna asked this question you know oh, both you and i are here in this world now arjuna oh krishna that how do you know about that vivaswa and krishna said that you know i exist before i know and this under and i know everybody what was happened in the past what is happening in the present what is happening in the future he is there he is visible he is there every you know he is always there that's known as he is omniscient so that's why krishna says many many birth both you and i have passed i can remember all of them but you cannot o arjuna then further we come to the uh, conclusion here that so arjuna was hearing this all from the supreme lord then arjuna how this one o arjuna you said you know you are this you are that i am beginning i am the end i am the annihilator i am the maintainer i am the controller i am everything then how do i see this so 
that's the time krishna is showing that the beautiful that the universal form that arjuna could see everything what arjuna is seeing arjuna saw in that universal form unlimited mouths unlimited eyes unlimited wonderful visions the form was decorated with many celestial ornaments and bore many diving upraised weapons he wore celestial garlands and garments and many divine scents were smeared over his body always wonder all was wondrous brilliant unlimited all expanding if hundreds of thousands of suns were to rise at once into the sky their radiance might resemble the effulgence of the supreme person in that universal form this is arjuna seeing this the supreme that the how the lord is maintaining how the lord is you know uh, taking care of all these things and as mentioned that he is everything so here krishna is showing that he is everything now arjuna bewildered with this one and that's also because of you know this is the problem like in slim we mentioned that when we cannot see the truth in two situations in two stages like we cannot see anything when once we are in a blind situation we cannot see anything but when there is a dazzling light then also we cannot see anything so Ar- here arjuna is in the situation of that dazzling light now arjuna can't see anything cannot think anything he is completely bewildered with it so this also our problem sometimes we are so blind we cannot see anything sometimes we are so much into so much of you know this so much of knowledge we say so much of things and we can also we cannot also see things properly so in that situation also arjuna here see that you know oh, Arj- oh lord that i understand and krishna how arjuna is seeing that i'll see in the next uh, word, you know uh, slide of it so arjuna pray to the krishna now krishna came down in his 400 form now further krishna arjuna prayed that oh arjuna you showed me show me your original form your original beautiful form and then krishna is actually further came down and to his original beautiful form and krishna is telling to arjuna in that situation arjuna this form is very dear and very special and this form is very special and then you know krishna is mentioning that you know when i come down with this form and is 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 mentioning like that avajana adi mamuda this is the ninth chapter 11 11th verse again the most confidential knowledge avajana adi mamuda manushyam tanu masudam param bhavam ajanando mama bhuda maheshwaram and krishna says that when i come down with my transcendental form the fools derides me they do not know that they am the supreme lord and am the supreme lord of all that being mama bhuda maheshwaram i am the supreme lord of all that being and then also in the 7th chapter 25th verse krishna says that um uh, uh, krishna says that sarvas nagam prakasha sarvasya yoga maya samavrda uh, mudo bhina bijana adi loko mam ajam avyayam what krishna says that nagam prakasha sir i am not actually i am not manifested for the foolish and unintelligent for them i am covered by my internal potency so that they do not know that you know i am unborn i am the supreme lord of that all being krishna says that also further that i am not manifested for the unintelligent and foolish so that's the reason krishna is telling here to arjuna this form is very dear very dear to me and only those who are devoted to krishna only those who have the inclination to see this form that krishna reveals to that the form to the that uh, that devotee so krishna is a, arjuna is a very dear devotee of krishna so krishna is revealing that very beautiful transcendental form to arjuna so we can see here and further here in the summary i'm just i'll finish right now and uh, so then again come to this conclusion who is god right so arjuna so that arjuna come to that conclusion arjuna is praying that beautiful prayer to the Arj- krishna krishna is in the 12th 10th chapter 12th verse and the 13th verse param brahm param dham pavitram param bhavan arjuna is praying purusham shashvatam divyam adi deva majam bhuvam agustyam rishaya sarva devasho nardastada asido devalo vyasa soyam chaiva brave vime arjuna is praying and telling to arjuna that o oh arjuna o oh krishna you are the param brahm you are the param brahman you are the supreme lord param dham you are the ultimate abode am paramam you are the supreme pavitram you are the most sacred and bhavan that the person and purusham shashvatam divyam and you are the purusha shashvatam you are the ever existing eternal adi devam you are the original supreme lord adi devam ajam you are unborn vibhum you are vast you are the supreme 
and this is not only that agustyam rushaya sarva all the sages agustyam rushaya sarva devasho nardastada nasido devalo vyasa all these great personalities great sages they are completely you know understand and completely realized in that supreme personality of godhead sri krishna they themselves says that you are the supreme personality of godhead so here we can understand that who is god he is none other than the supreme personality of godhead sri krishna sri chaitanya mahaprabhu the aradhya purusho pradesha taneya taddham vrindavan aradhya purusho the worshipable deity the supreme lord is the vrajesha nandan that the the nandana of the the vraja that he manifested here and that supreme lord is sri krishna and he is the supreme personality of godhead and that we can see that uh, thank you so much for listening me i would uh, uh, we will take the questions later and i would pass this to our dear uh, gobigan krishna prabhu uh, gobigan krishna prabhu please uh, uh, pardon me i just uh, went over seven minutes but uh, yeah please uh, please uh, please begin your section hari krishna thank you so much gobigan krishna prabhu are you there Gopi Gand Krishna Prabhu, are you there? Hare Krishna Prabhu, are you able to hear us? Yes, yes, please. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much for giving this uh, opportunity on the occasion of Bhagavad Gita Jayanti. Before we start, we'll take one minute break and take a deep darshan of uh, Radha Shyam Shundar. And we'll pray at their lotus feet so that we can understand the more about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. His grace Simhasar Prabhu explained from the beginning various philosophies and uh, he concluded uh, the Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead wonderfully. Now I will take uh, the topic a little bit further. Okay, if Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and what is the relationship between so many devatas, so many personalities are there. We have three crores of uh, devatas are there. what is the relationship between them and uh, even uh, the krishna himself came in different different avatars and what is the relationship between these avatars and the supreme lord and we can understand the complete picture uh, how lord will expand how lord will maintain the whole universe by using a different different uh, personalities devatas yeah so here um, i hope i am able to everybody is uh, uh, able to hear me yes sir yes, okay so before we start uh, we will offer our prayers to our shala prabhupad and acharya parampara without them we cannot understand this divine knowledge ओम ज्ञानतिमीरंदनाजनशलाकय चक्षर मिलित तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिदातस्वामीनाम नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाचात दिशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निचानंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे सो द लॉर्ड के एंड परफॉर्मड वेरियस लीलास वेरियस एक्टिविटीज टू अट्रैक्ट ऑल ऑफ अस टुवर्ड्स हिम सो दैट्स व्हाई 
लॉर्ड इज टेलिंग दैट जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम एवं यो व्यक्ति तत्वत तत्वा देहम पुनर्जन्म नैति मामे सो अर्जुन जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम द लॉर्ड अपियरेंस इज दिव्यम ट्रांसेंडेंटल इट्स नॉट लाइक आवर आवर बर्थ वी टेक बर्थ टू एंजॉय आवर कर्म आर टू suffer our karma but the lord will appear to take back us to god head to make us enlighten to protect us the lord will come for various purposes whoever understand janma karma janma means about his appearance karma means about his activities एवं यो वेति पुनर्जन्म नैति मामेति सो अर्जुना jara mrutyu vyadi we are all suffering birth after birth after birth but the lord is giving simple formula for the solution of all our problems but unfortunately in the materialistic way people are trying to find the different different solutions to adjust in this material world like if it is too cold people are trying to invent the heater to overcome the cold problem if it is too hot people are inventing ac machines to make it colder why we are finding the temporary solutions why we are suffering just because of this body so the intelligent person will think like that how can i come out of all my problems permanently here lord is giving a wonderful solution whoever try to understand about the lord appearance and about his past times they will come back to me so we no need to worry about anything usually to go back to god head is not so easy the yogis the munis they will meditate thousands and thousands of years but whoever the pure bhakta whoever understand the supreme personality of god head his janma and karma we can easily go back to lord performed so many leelas unlimited his leelas are unlimited and its leelas are divya if you think about the materialistic news or materialistic incidents you will get bored sometimes we will see the news channel will repeatedly post the same news and again and again people will get bored and they will switch off the tv but whereas a lot's past times are so 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 wonderful the more you hear the more sweeter yeah in bhagavad gita it is telling that tushyanti cha ramanti cha my devotees they will discuss about this past times and they will get pleasure out of that so there is a wonderful past time happen brahma vimohana leela after agasuras inhalation nobody was talking about the agasura killing for one year in vrindavana actually this conversation is happening between parikshit maharaj and sukadeva goswami parikshit maharaj was enquiring sukadeva goswami why nobody did not talk about the agasura killing for one year what happened i want to know 
the disciple duty is to enquire tadvidhi pranipatena paripreshnena shevaya humbly the disciple has to ask the spiritual master and this spiritual master will reveal the secrets the reveal the wonderful pastimes of the lord in the similar way parikshit maharaj is asking a question to sukadeva goswami and sukadeva goswami is answering after killing agasura by seeing the wonderful heroic activities of the supreme lord krishna all the demigods are astonished they all came and they were seeing very wonderfully and brahma surprised who is this boy small boy is killing big big demons very easily i want to know who is this boy definitely i know he is not an ordinary person he is a supreme personality of godhead but i want to see more his leelas after killing the tagashura all the coward boys they got their lunch boxes with a nice uh, curd rice sweets all milk product rice and everything and uh, they were having their lunch in a beautiful place of course whole vrindavan is beautiful even now also if you if you go now imli tala all those places uh, where lord invited all the gopas and gopis you will see even you will feel now also those uh, greenery and everything still it is maintained there it was so beautiful all birds are making chirping sound and all peacocks are making kui kui sounds and it was so very wonderfully situated all are circle around the lord and they are, by seeing the supreme lord they are taking the lunch and uh, all the coward boys duty is to take care of the cows cows the baby cows and they left those baby cows to pasturing the soft grass and they are having their lunch prasad all of a sudden all the cows are disappeared and all coward boys confuse it what's happening here where they went how and um, by seeing all covered boys anxiety krishna says you don't worry i will go and bring back all calls just you continue your lunch and krishna went to search for the all calls all of a sudden all calls got disappeared krishna knows that somebody is performing some activity he knows that but he is acting like he doesn't know anything and he came back and he saw that coward boys they are also got disappeared all of a sudden is this to know the krishna supremacy and to enjoy the past times of krishna the brahma himself stole in both coward boys and cows and after stolen krishna knows that this nothing to worry so he expanded himself as a all coward boys and all cops exactly same features same dress 
same ornaments and same 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 there is no difference nobody cannot identify the krishna krishna can do anything of course we are also krishna's part and parcel mamaivam so jeeva loka jeeva bhuta sanatana so but he can create krishna created whole universe whole living entities whole planet system everything for him it's not a big deal so he himself expanded as a coward boys and cows and as usual they went to their homes by seeing this coward boys all the gopis are overwhelmed and they were getting a lot of happiness comparatively hugging their own sons their own boys by hugging this today this boy they were feeling a lot of ecstasy lot of ecstasy further acharya sir explaining their breasts are overflowing with milk they want to feed krishna actually all elderly gopis has a desire they want to be like a yashoda mai so to fulfill their desire krishna performed this leela to fulfill all the elderly gopis desire krishna performed this leela and even the calls also when they approach to the cows the cows are overwhelmed very very happy very very happy and uh, they are also uh, immersed with ecstasy and nobody knows what's going on and after a few days balaram came balaram also got surprised the materialistic relationships like from between mother and father or a cow and calf may not be this much ecstatic definitely some external energy or some some supreme personality of god head is making some leela it must be krishna himself i want to ask krishna what's going on balaram went and asked krishna what's going on here then krishna explained everything briefly and by the time lord brahma came lord brahma is just one moment for him hmm? for us it is one year by the time one year over but uh, for the lords brahmas according to the brahmas life calculation sahasra yuga paryantam brahmas one day equal to 1000 yugas and one night equal to 1000 yugas so one moment in this earthly planet is equal to i mean one year in the earthly planet equal to one moment for brahma so just one moment he came back and he saw that exactly all covered by sir there all calls are there and they are doing as usual bau there is no production issue or there is no disaster nobody is bothering nobody is worrying what's going on here i stole in all these things then brahma got confused did i stole it properly or not and he went back and see all are sleeping and he made he made them to sleep they are all sleeping and he, again he came back and then he understood that this coward boy krishna is an ordinary person then for his surprise krishna showed all these boys and this calls became four handed narayana vishnu vishnu rupas and he understood that ata vidhi i want to test the supreme personality of god head what a great offend i did i want to go and ask forgiveness immediately he went and offered complete dandavat dandavat means a stick danda means stick if you put a stick on the floor it's complete flat 
there is no shakes the similarity he was went and offered his obeisances and he was crying again and again crying again and again with his tears he was doing abhishek for the lotus feet of the lord uh, my dear lord with my tiny mystic power i am thinking that i am the creator but i am a fool number one you are the creator i am thinking like a glow worm glow worm sometimes it will be uh, give some glowness and sometimes it go off but you are the real light you are the real sun i am the glow worm in in front of the sun how foolish i am hmm? here it is uh, praying after realizing that krishna is the supreme personality of god head he was praying my lord just see my uncivilized impotence to test your power i try to extend my illusory potency to cover cover you the unlimited and trivial super soul who bewilder even the masters of illusion what i am compared to you i am just like a small spark in the presence of a great fire hmm? brahma himself is thinking like that he is a small spark in in front of the great fire what do we compare with ourselves with supreme lord we are nothing sometimes if somebody got some power or some money they will deny god hey what is god i am the god i have two cars i have a big bungalow i have a big balance why should i go and surrender to the god brahma also was thinking like that to show that he is a supreme above all the creation he manifested this brahma vimohara lila later brahma was asked what is the price chitta i want to take a lower bath so that my ahankara will fall down then krishna told that don't worry in the kali yuga i will come as a chaitanya mahaprabhu you come as a haridas thakur in a low class family you can take birth in a low class family so that your false ego will go down so in chaitanya lila haridas thakur is none other than the brahma so later <clears throat> lord did so many past times like govardhana hill lord indra was so much puffed up to stop his puffedness he redirected all brajavasis to worship govardhana giri instead of indra and indra got confused and indra got offended who is this small coward boy he is stopping my worship huh? i want to take all these worships why he is redirected to govardhana giri and he sent a samvardaka cloud to inundate the vrindavana all vrajavasis cows and everybody came to krishna krishna save me save me save me immediately krishna lifted govardhana giri and he saved all the brajavasis for 7 days and 7 nights so what can we understand from these past times yeah there are so many three crores of demigods devatas are there different devatas are mentioned for different different purposes varuna deva if you want to go if you want get a rain go and please the varuna deva if you want to get a beautiful wife go and worship uma if you want to get a good health go and worship surya like that different different devatas are headed with different different departments so can i worship that many 3 crores of 33.3 uh, crores of uh, 
devatas to how can i please them lord krishna is telling that in bhagavad gita clearly antavattu phalantesham tat bhavatya alpamedasham devan deva yajoyanti mad bhakta yant maam api krishna is telling that those who worship the demigods go to the planets of the demigods but my devotee is ultimately reach to my supreme planet hmm? you may ask prabhu what is the problem if i go to some demigod planet that is also fine right what is the problem or somebody will tell you can worship anybody but you will go to god propada gave a nice analogy if you buy a ticket for hyderabad you will go to only hyderabad if you buy a ticket to mumbai you will go to mumbai whatever the ticket if you buy and if you you cannot get into the other flight so the problem here is if you see in the right hand side there are two pictures one is a material world if you see this material world is composed of 14 planetary systems seven upper planetary systems and seven lower planetary systems all the 33 million 3.3 crores of devatas will be there in upper planetary system yeah so if you go to the <clears throat> upper planetary system again after your balance after your karma balance is over you have to come back that's what in bhagavad gita krishna is telling that a brahma bhuvana loka punaravartino arjuna mau petya kaunteya punar janmana vidyate krishna is telling that a brahma bhuvana loka among this 14 planetary systems any planet you go punaravartino arjuna again you have to come back ಮೋಮುಪೇತ್ಯ ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಪುನರ್ಜನ್ಮ ನಿತ್ಯತೆ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕಮ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಯು ನೋ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ವೆದರ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ಎ ಟೆಂಪರರಿ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಸಂಬಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆರ್ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ಗೋಲೋಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸರ್ವ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಎಟರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ that is up to us krishna is not touching our free will and further krishna is telling that bhoktaram ignatapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram suhrudam sarvabhutanam gnatmamam shantiruchati we do different different worships but the ultimate receiver bhoktaram ignatapasam all our ignas and tapasas who is receiver i am the bhakta krishna is telling that i am the bhakta it's like a prime minister you have you need to get some approval from the prime minister uh there are multiple ways you can approach your local authority your municipality or your corporate authority you need to submit your arji there and they will take it to the some minister and from the minister some central minister and from the central minister it will go to the prime minister and uh, prime minister has to grant it and again it has to come back to the local minister and then the local authority so but ultimately it is going to the supreme person here even though if you go and worship different different personalities but ultimately we have to get granted by the supreme personality of god that's what krishna is telling that endowed with such a faith he endeavors worship to such a particular demi god and obtains his desires but in actually the benefits are bestowed by me alone hmm? krishna is telling that akama kamo sarva kamo moksha kamo thivrena bhakti so whatever the desire you have if you come to me i will grant it or if you don't have desire come to me i will accept you so uh prabhupada nicely explained 
this philosophy we are indebted to so many personalities in our day to day life we are indebted to surya deva he is giving unlimited light hmm? if you put uh, one lamp or two lamps in your home psg will send 100 dollar bill per month so but krishna is giving unlimited light through surya deva so how much indebted we are surya deva how much money you need to pay hmm? varuna deva varuna deva is giving gallons and gallons of the water if you want to buy one gallon of water you need to pay 1 dollar 2 dollar based upon the brand yeah so how much money we have to pay for the varuna deva he is giving millions and trillions billions of the water we are so much indebted and uh, we are so much indebted vayu deva hmm? he is giving unlimited oxygen to all of us hmm? if you go to jfk hospital and if you ask oxygen cylinder they will charge 2000 dollars huh? one cylinder of oxygen is 2000 dollars let's imagine how many cylinders of the oxygen is there in this total creation we are so much indebted we are so much indebted to pitru devatas all our forefathers hmm? they gave this body wonderful body they trained us they fed us they take care of us we are indebted to so many muni and rishis they gave wonderful knowledge it's very difficult to worship everybody hmm? prabhu i am taking lot of benefit from all these devatas i want to bring all 3.3 crores of devatas into my home and i want to worship pole mangala arti all artis it's not at all possible so krishna is telling that if you worship me like if you pour a water to the root of the tree automatically all the branches twigs leaves will be nourished so if you worship lord krishna automatically all upadevatas are also nourished because they are all part and parcel of the supreme lord hmm? if you see visvarupa picture uh, while well, his grace in mr prabhu was showing he showed one visvarupa picture in this visvarupa picture we saw all aditya surya rudra kumaras everybody was there so they are all part and parcel of the lord so we no need to go different different places if you please krishna automatically everything is granted krishna is like a supermarket you no need to go to one place to the rice one place to the oil one place to the books or one place to the something something hmm? all things are available at krishna so krishna is the giver of everything so if you worship krishna automatically everybody will be satisfied we cannot even if you take a day to day example for our day to day activities for we will pay federal tax or state tax we don't go and pay tax to the education department tax to the sanitation department tax to the street light department no we don't pay we will pay only one place automatically those funds will be distributed different different departments similarly if you worship lord krishna automatically all other devatas will be satisfied krishna is also explaining the same thing here mattav parataram nanyat kinchadasti dananjaya mai sarvam idam prokam sutre mani ganayava Hmm. everything rests upon me as a pearls are strung on the thread outward we may not see oh krishna is not there how can i see that hmm. krishna himself is explaining if you take a pearl necklace you don't see how those pearls are strung together we don't see inner thread so similar krishna and krishna's energy is the all the root cause of 
all these things so we need to be engaged ourselves in the krishna service so automatically everybody will be pleased okay prabhu uh, that's fine i will do that but what about uh, different different avataras you are telling hmm? lord ramachandra is there narasimha deva is there hmm? what is this can you explain little bit more you may ask so here let me little bit zoom this picture so that uh, we can see more elaborately chaitanya mahaprabhu with the mercy of chaitanya mahaprabhu everything is explained very clearly sanatan goswami when he went to chaitanya mahaprabhu in prayag in chaitanya charitamrita majjali la 20th chapter chaitanya mahaprabhu very clearly explaining different different avataras hmm? the root of all avataras the root of all creation the root of this whole ishvaraha paramaha krishna satchidananda vigraha anadiradir sarva karana karana for all the causes of cause he is the krishna brahma himself is declared in brahma sanhita he is a swayam roopa he is a original form as a coward boy in vrindavan hmm? he is a swayam roopa again the swayam roopa is expanded into two forms one is swayam prakasha other one is vaibhava prakasha the swayam prakasha is nothing but multiple expansions with the same features like uh, in rasa dance krishna expanded multiple forms all the gopis are thinking like that krishna is dancing with me krishna is dancing with me krishna is dancing with me all the gopis are thinking like that and also when krishna got married 16108 wives he expanded himself 16108 krishnas simultaneously he lived together all the palaces narad mahamuni surprised he went and saw managing one wife itself is very difficult how krishna is managing 16108 wives which is i cannot imagine how he is doing i want to go and see narad mahamuni went when he went to dwaraka krishna was appeared different different palaces he went to rukmini mata he was talking with rukmini mata and he went to another palace and he was doing morning activities morning rituals and he went to another palace uh, he was playing with their kids so like that he was doing so many activities so that is called prabhava prakasha and vaibhava prakasha he himself will expand but his moods are different hmm? example krishna and balaram is same but uh, balaram will wear blue color dhoti uh, and his complexion is different and his mood is different and his uh, weapon is different but same almost so <clears throat> and then vaibhava prakasha again expanded into tadekatma roopa hmm? different different moods in different different features if you see vilasa forms you will see four handed vaikuntha forms hmm? all vishnu tattvas will be in four handed vaikuntha forms and again the vilasa formas will be expanded further prabhava vilasa vaibhava vilasa Uh, we see so many narayana forms so many vishnu tattvas like uh, vasudeva aniruddha sankarshana prajumna hmm? so many first quadruple expansion is called prabhava vilasa and second quadruple expansion is called vaibhava vilasa and uh, 12 months you might have observed any devotees they while wearing tilak they will chant 12 names of uh, vishnu names those 12 names are none other than 
ट्वेल्व मंथ्स ओम केशवाय नम ओम नारायण नम ओम माधवाय नम ओम गोविंद नम लाइक दट वी अप्लाई तिलक सो दोज आर ऑल कम्स अंडर वैभव विलास कम्स अंड लीलावतारा अगेन हियर इफ यू कम बैक हियर तदेकात्म रूप अगेन डिवाइडेड इंटू स्वांश लीलावतारा लॉर्ड विल कम विथ डिफरेंट लीला लाइक मत्स्यवतार रामावतार नरसीमहवतार वामनावतार लाइक पुषावतार कर्णोदक साय विष्णु गर्भोदक साय विष्णु क्षीरोदक साय विष्णु लाइक दिस मन्मंतरावतार युगवतार लाइक दट लॉर्ड विल कम डिफरेंट डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स सो युगवतार यू मैट हेव एवेर आफ इट धर्म संस्थापनाय संभवा युगे युगे परत्राणा साधूना विनाशा चतुष्कृत धर्म संस्थापनाय संभवा युगे युगे यू मैट हेव हर्ड दिस फेमस श्लोक लॉर्ड विल कम हिमसे कृष्ण इज हिमसे टेलिंग दट ऐ विल कम युग एवरी युग हि हिमसे टेलिंग दट सो वी नो नीड टू कंफ्यूज हू इज द रामचंद्र और हू इज द अदर युग नरसिंहवतार और हू इज दट all our krishna only he is they are coming to protect paritranaya sadhuna vinashaya chitrushtam dharma samasthapanardhaya sambhavami yuge yuge to paritranaya sadhuna means to save the devotees to protect the devotees vinashaya chitrushtam to annihilate the demons धर्म संस्थापनाय टू रीएस्टाब्लिश द रिलीजियस प्रिंसिपल संभवा युगे युगे ऐ विल अपियर युग आफ्टर युग सो पीपल मे टेल दट प्रभो सो मेनी अवतार सो मेनी एक्सपैंशन ऐ आम गेटिंग कंफ्यूज वाट इज दिस इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड बट दर इज नो कंफ्यूजन these are all confusion because we are not following the parampara or we are not reading the scriptures properly the krishna is the supreme personality of godhead and different different expansions and different different departments and different different department heads like prime minister is only one but prime minister can expand himself sometimes uh, to take over some power or he will have various departments like irrigation department like lighting department or like uh, so many departments like uh, industrial department mining department each department will have one one head financial minister so kubera is the head of the financial minister so all the upadevatas are the various department heads krishna is the supreme personality of god head there is no confusion it's very clearly explained with the mercy of chaitanya mahaprabhu and with the mercy of uh, parampara this knowledge very clearly explained hmm? so we no need to get confused or we no need to get confused so with this i will conclude i will keep 10 minutes time for question answer session um today we clearly understand various philosophies various understandings and various tatvas and various upadevatas and their move towards the supreme lord and the, what is the relation between the supreme lord and upadevatas and how to understand this whole universal creation all these things we understood so uh, before we go to question answers uh i will tell one quick thing and um, one i will show the goloka chart and then i will end then i can we can discuss the you might have see that in all of our temples you might have seen this picture so the top most planet in the lord's creation is the goloka and from the goloka all these other expansions other uh tatvas ke and these are all universes so if you take this universe 
you will see 14 planetary systems if you move to one planetary system to another planetary systems you need to do a lot of tapasyas you need to do a lot of uh, austerities but going that exponential process is very difficult but whoever chant hare krishna maha mantra there is a shortcut to go back to godhead whoever chant hare krishna maha mantra they can easily directly go back to godhead bhagavad gita krishna is confirming that yam yam vaati smaran bhavanti jante kalevaram tam tam evaiti kamteya sada tad bhava bhavitah whoever remember me hmm? at the time of death they will come back to me whoever remember something else at the time of death they will go there so our aim is to go back to godhead and uh, which is very easy shortcut process lord chaitanya mahaprabhu gave very easiest process chant hari krishna maha mantra and be happy yeah now it's time for question answers uh please open up Shri Krishna, devotees, uh, please, if you have any reflections, any questions, concerns, comments, please, uh, please share so that we can uh, all discuss further. Thank you, uh, Kupigan Prabhu, very nicely, wonderfully explaining the past times and appearance of the Supreme Lord. Yes, that's there. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. um i have a question from the last slide that you showed the goluka vrindavan slide um on on that slide you should be showed the earth the uh, our, where we are and then the vishnu is shown in the patal whereas it shows it's a gross it was marked as gross then why does if it is gross and a lower planet why does vishnu reside in the patal not patala let me share it again uh every planetary every material universe after material universe creation the garbhodaka sai vishnu garbhodaka sai vishnu is an expansion of uh, lord krishna himself and uh, from the garbhodaka sai vishnu the from his novel lord brahma will appear the brahma is the first living entity in the material universe so brahma will create other living entities and other uh, things in this planetary system so if you see padmanabha swami devasthanam i think in trivandrum south india you will see same detail uh lord garbhodaka sai vishnu will sleep and from his novel brahma welcome yeah so lord will enter in every creation and every living entity so first lord himself will enter as garbhodaka sai vishnu and after that the lord will enter each living entity also each planet also so like that it's a lord is 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 avatars is expansions is that clear mataji shweta mataji yes prabhu ji so basically this this in this picture they are showing vishnu ji there but it's actually not the place basically vishnu is everywhere that's what they wanted to yeah yeah even yeah. though lord comes here to uh, lord ramachandra came lord krishna came even though they came here they are not infected with this material nature sattva rajo tamo gunas they are transcendental they will come and perform the leelas and they will go back but we are infected with these three modes and uh, uh, we are we came here to suffer our karma and to enjoy our karma the lord is not bounded with this material world okay thank you prabhu ji thank you so much anybody else has any questions 
प्लीज ओपन अप हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी गो हेड प्लीज सो वंडरफुल क्लास आई मीन आई हैव क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द क्लास रिलेटेड टू हु इज द गॉड एंड ओवर देयर आई मीन वी डिस्कस दैट देयर आर डिफरेंट names given inter into different religion like in uh, jainism is different in uh, christian christianity is a different in uh, islam is uh, allah so i mean uh, here we are connecting ourselves with the indian mythology and we are connecting with the bhagavad gita and where we are talking about krishna is the supreme lord krishna is the father of the universe and he is the controller so we can understand because of our uh, culture and our uh, understanding of the krishna and we can connect our sub that okay krishna is the supreme lord and uh, is is the is the uh, last stage of the supremacy but how we can relate this into the other religion and how we can convince others that okay i mean krishna is the supreme lord i mean is it is it the universal truth or is it just uh, limited to our indian culture only wonderful question thank you proji for raising that um, so beautiful question is how we can relate yes it's a universal truth everybody believes that even i mean this is because of if we go deep into the christian philosophy or their teachings even so how do we understand what christian philosophy says what christ told right so it's, it's bible then how do we go further that uh, krishna even sorry christ even uh, understanding so christ activities christ uh, what christ did for it you know, what is the christ uh, lifestyle uh, so that is the christianity basically so if you look at christ right so christ said everybody all the disciples of the christ considered uh, christ as a guru they called him guru they called him you know spiritual master mm-hmm. and even christ we can see from the bible itself that christ never claimed that he is the lord he is the supreme lord he claimed that he is the son of the lord he is a son right and he is many times in the bible if you go through the bible he is addressing the lord oh my father oh my father so then the question is that who is that father so christ himself is uh, proving that then if you look at the islam islam muhammad is the muhammad nabi and muhammad nabi never claimed that he is also a god he said he is a prophet he is a representative that the supreme lord that almighty that supreme lord is actually instructing him through an agent that he considered as there is an agency between you know in between came and instructed to muhammad and muhammad was meditating for 30 40 days and then he instructed to muhammad that what are the you know the laws of the lord then the muhammad was then he didn't see the lord but he was just understood about the lord uh but he does not know who is that the supreme lord so he they started to believe that lord does not have any form but actually then the 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 agency or that uh, what is called that the angel who came to instruct the muhammad and it was mentioned that if you go through the quran and their structure we can see that the muhammad and told um, the angel told muhammad that i will show you the god so i'll show you the personal form of the god i'll show you the quality and the form everything i'll show you so you just come to this place and then there is a pond will be there and then you look at the pond you may not directly see the but you can see the reflection of the lord in that pond then muhammad came that's the time a pig over, came over a hog came over and then he just completely discarded the water that you know the you know the constant water it was there is no wave at all then that's the time but muhammad couldn't see anything so that time god lord just disappeared and then they then considers that you know yes uh, that that was the uh, decision that you know you don't want to see the lord so that you know you 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 so that's why this pig and hawks became haram for them because of they you know so these are all the things are out there so again so if you look at that this uh, judaism or uh, you know jewish actually yes they also worship in the sense see these are the abrahamic religion right you know that the abrahamic religion that is came from the you know abraham and then you know there are mm-hmm. divisions of it and there is a root of it but still they are all kind of not clearly that say there are lots of confusion so that's why that we come to veda veda is not any hindu or is not a hindu text 
Hindu is not a religion. Hindu is a culture. It's a way of life. Hindu word comes itself from the, you know, the British or the foreigners, Arabs called that, you know, those who lived in the Indus Valley or Sindhu River, and they couldn't pronounce, you know, Sindhus or the people, those who lived on the Sindhus, they called Hindus and then became Hindus. But there is no text in the, any of the, our text, Vedic text, you know, we can see that, you know, this, this is an eternal culture. This is a Sanadhana Dharma. This Sanadhana Dharma, which based on the Veda, Veda means, Veda means knowledge, is not based on any religion. This is based on the Veda or with the root word of with if it is not knowledge. That's where the Veda come, Vidyalaya comes, Vidwan comes, and so all comes from this root word Vidya or Veda. So Veda is based on, Veda is actually, it's considered as, and everybody universally, Veda is recognized and appreciated, celebrated as the, the, the root text of, or the absolute knowledge of everything. So all the other religions came later. These religions are called Semitic religions. Semitic religions means that there is a certain, maybe it's came up with as a cult initially, then it's actually expanded themselves as the group of the people. That's what we can see that in the case of Islam, we can see in the case of uh, Judaism, we can see in the case of uh, Christianity, if you can case. But Hindu, or we can say Vedic culture, or Sanadhan Dharma is not like that. Sanadhana Dharma means that it is eternal religion, it's eternal. Like for an example, what is this eternal religion means there is a dharma for each and every living entity there is a it is bound by it so like dharma of a water we can say the quality of a water dharma of a water is actually is a liquidity or dharma of a fire the heat and light right of dharma of you know um, sun globe or light you know it's, it's produced the light so everything has its own quality and nature so every living entity is nature is that Sanadhana Dharma, that means his eternal nature, that he has an eternal, because of, we, if we think, that's why our Veda or Vedanta Sutra starts with the Sutra known as Adhado Brahma Gigyasa. Adhado Brahma Gigyasa, that means this is the nature of the living entity that to inquire about him, that who is, who he is, who he is, and who am I, what is my nature, where I come from. This is Brahma Gigyasa. So that's where actually, so this, a living entity itself, or Veda says that we are the part and parcel, or the soul is Satchidananda. He is also Satchidananda. He is part and parcel of that Supreme. His nature is that Satchidananda. He is eternal. He is full of knowledge and he is full of potency and he is full of bliss. This we can experience, we can realize it. That's why this knowledge, which is not this empirical knowledge, or this is just a Semitic religion, they come up with something. But this we can realize. That's called, you know, Vigyan. That's called the Vishesha Gyan. That means the knowledge which we can realize. So all of our knowledge, all this Veda, Vedic knowledge, or what we, like, this is Bhagavad Gita. It's not that it's an ordinary text or somebody just wrote it up. No, this is all Vigyan. This is all the realized knowledge. So that's where different sages, right? Think about that, you know, the sage Aryabhata or the great sages Vyasadeva or great sages be, before that. There are so many great sages. How they could say that, you know, the polar, you know, the, the, think about that 10,000 years ago, 15,000 years ago, there is a star on the North Pole. He is constant. How did they come to know that? Our scripture, our Bhagavad explains this, that the North Pole, the pole star or Dhruva Nakshatra is a stable, it's a constant there. How did he come to know that? Our scripture explained about the Bhugola. This is the realized knowledge. And in the Abrahamic, in the Western world, even 400 years ago, if somebody said that, you know, Earth is a globe, they would have killed him because they couldn't understand that. But our scripture, thousands of thousands of years ago, which mentioned about that, this is Gola, this Bhugola. This pole star mm -hmm. is a constant. There are stars and there is so many. You think about that, our scriptures, so many. And it's all, it's, it's all connected to the, our Shastra. See, if you look at the Western philosophy or Western science and their, right, their philosophy, there's a big gap between the science and the, their religion philosophy, right? That's why the science cannot accept as a God for them. But our Vedic philosophy or this Vedic knowledge, we, Veda itself is known as a Shastra. Right? We say, mm -hmm. um, you know, Shastra, everything is a Shastra, right? We call it Shastra. Shastra meaning other Vedic text is known as a Shastra. 
but if we take that shastra into the western philosophy they don't have that shastra they say it's a science but ours is not like that so if you look around like this for an example veda said that you know just for an example sula prabhupada gave this example like a cow dung right cow dung you know in the western philosophy or we can say that cow dung is a is a stool nobody if if it is a it's a it's a discrete when it says a stool but veda says that if you if you take the cow dung it's a very you know purifier and if you sprinkle this and if you use this one this cow dung is the best purifier and in our culture in our this understanding in the veda it is celebrated is mentioned that cow dung is the best purifier and even the scientists can prove that even the cow dung is the best purifier and it can be utilized but in the western philosophy it's just a stool so how did mm-hmm. this all come from where this come from so this is known as this called as aprameya this is beyond our perception that's where we realizing this fact if you if you take anything in the that you know the shastra our 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 understanding of vedic understanding if you take anything and you can come up to this realization and understanding it every day day to day and we ask this right where do we come from right our birth look at our birth where do we go why we are dying right why we are getting this why the so many people are suffering but some are enjoying some are here so many questions how this world is everything is answered in our but that is not the case for the other religion that's very limited and this called you know very uh, abrahamic in the sense that semitic in the sense that you know it just came upon certain ideas and they that's why it's time place circumstances right but this is i mean they it, because of this one you know they came up with this evolution the theory of evolution so many so many things but do we really I mean even science came up with and the philosophy came up with are they really um, you know you know are they really um, determine on that what they are speaking about they are not things are keep changing for them but think about our veda it was there for thousands of thousands of years ago even 10000 15000 years ago is still the same why because of mm-hmm. this is the absolute truth so this veda is saying that like vedas there you know angas upanishad is there there is a narayan upanishad is there narayan upanishad is states that narayana brahma jayade narayana indra jayade narayana narayana rudra jayade narayana chandra jayade dishas jayade uh it likes that and then there is an upanishad krishna upanishad krishna ha krishna sarve karya krishna ho karmaadi moolam krishna ha adi purusha purushottama krishna adi karmaadi moolam krishna sarve karya krishna anadi tasmina janam darbahi he is everything he is the complete so this is a krishna upanishad and veda says that and and this itself clearing out that yes that the supreme personality the supreme lord i mean you can imagine that this world it just come from like what that 30000 years ago or even according to the western philosophy or science that this was not there before and nothing was there before then what was there before right so all we can ask itself and this question itself this word is so we can relate everything this called realized realized knowledge relates everything to that the vedic knowledge and it is considered as its universal it's not that any sectarian it's not that anything that which somebody come up with like that it's 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 from the lord himself and as it's mentioned that supreme lord instructed this knowledge to manu soyambhu manu and we are all humans all living condit humans are considered as the the uh, the the sons of manu that's why we call us manushya why we are calling us manushya because of there is you know this itself that manushya word itself is proves that right otherwise where this where this manushya come from or where this word start from who started with it manushya how it come from this is the way that we see the things we analyze the things manushya where is come from from the manu so who is this manu manu is the son of brahma so we are all the brahma so that is the progeny that's the you know the way the people come down into this world but you know that's our veda says our scripture says so yeah i mean this is the way we can see things and uh, it's very clearly and if you go detail into that we can understand and if you go detail i mean it may be take much time to understand the bhagavad gita in detail but if you take bhagavad gita this is the essence of everything is the essence of that vedanta sutra adado brahma gigyasa right janmadi asya yadaha everything come from me 
ഞാൻ ഉപനിഷത് സ്റ്റേജ് ദാറ്റ് പൂർണാത് പൂർണമിതം പൂർണാത് പൂർണ്ണം ഉദച്ചേതെ ഈശോ ഉപനിഷത് സ്റ്റേജ് ദാറ്റ് ഈശാ വാസ്യമിതം സർവം യത് കിഞ്ച ജഗത് യാം ജഗത് so like that so so many so many and if you relate with it, it's not that just blind faith we take it but you take it to yourself mm-hmm. apply it to yourself and put it and see that you know what what is comes out of it so this is the way we see and this is the realized knowledge it's not that just uh, you know a textbook or somebody just mentioned about it no this this knowledge the supreme lord himself imparted this vedic knowledge to brahma that's why brahma has four phases why brahma has four phases just to impart this knowledge that it is sama another veda this four phases represents and brahma is speaking this four veda vedic knowledge to the uh, disciples and the descendants yes. is it okay thank you thank you i would like to add one point uh, if you read 4.1 and 4.2 your answer will be, your question and will be answered probably uh simple uh, when krishna spoke bhagavad gita there was no christianity there was no islamism there is no buddhism nothing was there so these are all ism scheme recently like 2000 years ago christianity came 1500 years ago islamism came and uh, 1000 years ago buddhism came so uh prabhupada clearly mentioned that whoever is following bhagavad gita they can better christian they can become better <laughs> muslim and they can become better buddhism so uh you can explain if anybody ask like that <clears throat> thank you if i can add something here sure sure please christianity and islam are bona fide religions and the way it has been explained is that suppose you're going to explain the process of digestion the way the process of digestion is explained to a child who's in elementary school will be very basic level then the next is if someone goes to high school it will be having little more details then a person who goes into college will be much more details and someone who goes into medical schools will have even more details and someone who is an internal gastroenterologist he'll have tremendous amount of details so what we talk about is the person's not age but the consciousness of people so the consciousness based on time place circumstance the consciousness of people gets degraded and then to bring them back and similarly in our vedas gautama buddha came in and he took the entire mass away from the vedas and he says this is all false but there was a purpose because of whatever nonsense was going on in the name of vedas so christianity islam uh lord jesus christ muhammad peygamber prophet muhammad they are considered gurus in fact the word christ christ comes from the root word christos and another word for krishna is krista the son of god so jesus christ the son of god we should not try to uh, minimize uh we offer respects but we got to understand as like what prabhu ji said it came about 1000 2000 how many ever years the uh, history uh, records that but they are still bona fide uh, religions and the other thing final point is that um everyone is establishing a connection with god krishna everyone so one understanding is that the river flows on top of the ground the river also flows underground and when it is flowing underground we dig these wells so in one particular village there will be a well and then in some other particular village there will be another well and the way they have constructed that well some may not have any barrier around it it may just be a hole in the ground some may have a barrier different types but the water going is all the same and how people are able to drink from it and for a devotee the most important one of these attributes for a devotee is loyalty and faithfulness so loyalty and faithfulness we can see in our experience is the maximum in a dog a dog doesn't differentiate whether his master is wearing a raincoat or whether he is wearing a tuxedo he recognizes his master and similarly in our gita when it says the pandit samadarshana is that when we see all other living entities we see them 
and you know if somebody is worshiping and that's what to uh, gopi prabhu's point okay prabhupad says that i'm not come here to convert you so the only thing we should understand is we've got this gift of detailed knowledge that is the mercy of prabhupad and the acharyas that we have detailed information but if there is someone who is doing christianity you know he can do his christianity if there is someone who is doing islam he does his islam so no, i understand that part i mean i totally understand but so in that follow up part i mean so all this new religions which you just said that it came like 2000 years back or something in in recent years uh, i mean uh, so all those goes into the supreme lord krishna i mean kind of uh, can we consider that as a like 33 crore uh, demigods uh, that goes into the final supremacy of the krishna similarly christianity islam all those goes also towards the uh, krishna as a root i mean as a supremacy and the supreme yes uh, personality yes exactly that concept to that question is true because of there is only one god there cannot be many god isn't it correct correct so if that one god is that you know if even jesus said that my father allah said that almighty has a person he has a form he has so bhagavad explains all about it he is a god is nature what he does and it's true i mean we can see that even science proven that we can see only 25 percentage of the his, his creation that's you know bhagavad says that let's say about the vibhuti and then 75 percentage that's which is not we don't see in but that's beyond our conception and limit but that is that doesn't mean that there is nothing beyond it yes everything is there so this this understanding that supreme lord is one his name is krishna and he is all attractive the name of krishna is all the meaning of name krishna is means all attractive the meaning of rama means the supreme enjoyer and he is the creator he is the uh, he is the maintainer he is the annihilator vishnu vishnu means the form itself the meaning itself is he is great is is wonderful is great and jishnu is you know nobody can conquer him that's the meaning of jishnu so so many names came upon it so that's why you know we can see that there are so many names you know related to the supreme lord but supreme lord is one that krishna is that the supreme lord is krishna and everything goes to him doesn't matter i mean see why it is this as mentioned that this depends on the time place and circumstances right mm-hmm. so the if you look at the mediterranean or the mid mid middle east mm-hmm. people were very struggling and then for them we cannot uh, impart this uh, transcendental knowledge like that okay you should not kill you should not you should eat only the um, you know um, you know vegetarians and vegetables and you should worship in such a way that it is not possible that time so lord is also send his uh, representative as muhammad and he instructed in such mm-hmm. a way that people were some point of time people were not even aware of who is god and that's why there is a time in between that medieval time people were not even aware that sri krishna even say that due course of time it's all diminished this knowledge goes people does not know who is god who what to do so that time the lord sends is the representatives and then so that they can slowly come out they can slowly come out they can at least believe in something that there is an higher being there is a supreme lord there is an higher being that you should some way or other you should connect it you should connect mm-hmm. it. so that's where also you know in the case of christianity or in the case of islam whatever it is so lord's arrangement all these are lord's arrangement so in the bhagavad gita it's mentioned that e edam am prabadhyante stam sadaiva sajjajamya kam mam vartamanu vartunde manushya partha sarvashah the fourth chapter of 11th verse what is mentioned that everybody i reward them accordingly how they surrender unto me right so this is a journey so this is a journey that's why in the bhagavadam mentioned that one who takes the birth in the la- land of uh, bharata varsha is most fortunate because of there is everything is there to understand that you know who is the supreme he is most fortunate but there may be people those who taken birth on the other regions of the world yes it may not be up to but there is a way that slowly they can there are some processes out there so that they can connect to the supreme indirectly and then everybody then is krishna says that also everybody has to come to me mam ye damam prabadhinde tam sadaiva bajam mama vartamanu vartunde manushya par 
everybody follows my path krishna says that everybody follows my path mama vartamanu vartundi everybody follows my path but mm-hmm. there is one indirect and there is one direct so it is also mentioned that it's very very fortunate that one who is in come in krishna consciousness in such a way that is mentioned that manushya naam sahasreshu kashchit edisiddhaye for many many millions of lives that one who comes to know about krishna and kashchit edisiddha naam maam edi tatvadaha maam veti tatvada that means one who knows me after many many millions of birth or out of many many thousand many many millions one who knows me and out of the millions of those who knows me that one who really realize me one who really understand me and that's what it is and then also krishna says that in the seventh chapter manushya naam sahasreshu um no bahu naam janma naam ande gyanavan maam prabadhyante so this is the this is the knowledge bahu naam janma naam ande after many many millions of lifetimes gyanavan maam prabadhyante vasudevam sarvamedi samahatma sudurlabha that means after many 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 millions of lifetimes after one who understand this transcendental knowledge about me then behunam janmana mande gyanavan mam prabhatyante vasudevam sarvam the sub people the supreme lord is everything so supreme lord vasudeva his name is vasudev or krishna is everything for such people and they will attain me and yeah that's correct because of you know is all lords arrangement and everything is happening according to the will of the lord um nobody is you know yes it is why it is like that why it is like that but there are lots of misunderstanding a lot of confusion and improperly using the religion for so many other things that's all we can see that yes this bhagavad gita explains that if you look at the bhagavad gita chapter 16 lord clearly mentioned about these qualities of the people around the world that's demonia qualities and the divine qualities lord explains everything very well so nicely so we can see that around the world yes everything goes up to that supreme lord his name is krishna and he is all attractive and that's you know explained about that is this quality is nature who is that he sees he is there i mean i will just give you one example in the we know all know that udupi sri krishna kshetra udupi in uh, in karnataka and it's not it's not it's is madhavacharya me 300 uh, years back there was a great saint madhavacharya installed the deity of supreme lord sri krishna his name is known as udupi krishna or balagopala and we know that those time there were lots of this uh, you know discriminations were there there is a caste system and some people are not allowed to go to the temple and this uh, wonderful uh, there is a wonderful uh, devotee of lord he was so dear to him he was so wonderful and he was so devoted to krishna but he is actually born in a lower caste and in the lower caste they are not allowed to enter the temple but he has such a faith such an intention such a desire to see the supreme lord and there was one festival happening on a, you know early there is a festival and he thought that you know if i just go along with the crowd into the temple and if i take a darshan of the lord and then you know nobody will notice me so that i can see the lord so what he did this his name was kanagadas he was not you know old i mean he may be like 8 uh, 9 years old or 14 years old i mean that's still uh, has to confirm but the kanagadas was very very devoted to the supreme lord so he went to the inside the temple on this festival day and then he uh, somehow took the darshan of it and then the, all on a sudden somebody noticed him that you know he are, he is not supposed to be there inside the temple and then they caught him and this kanagada they bind they bound him on the tree nearby on the opposite side that's the you know the west side of the uh, temple and then they beat him like anything they thrown the you know pulled the stones and you know bleeding he was bleeding and people were you know mercilessly persecuting him and then this kanakada just uh, cried and uh, you know just cried and talked loudly that oh lord what kind of mistakes i did i just wanted to see you and this is what is uh, you know i get the results oh lord i just came to see you and uh, can i have your darshan think about that if you still go to the temple in odupi temple there every temple actually they construct in a such a way that the deity is actually facing towards the east and then what happened seeing this kanagadas you know this uh, this this pathetic situation is this distressed condition 
immediately the deity turns from the you know east side to the western side all on a sudden that there is a wall between this kanagadas and the lord that broke down and fall down and there is a hole created in between and kanagadas could see the supreme lord the deity the supreme lord there directly and the lord was giving darshan think about that deity is installed it cannot move you want to install the deity but the deity is completely turned to the you know 180 degrees and opposite to the and gave the darshan to the kanagadas if you go there is a history and if you go there in the dp temple you can see that and that the main entrance door is till since then that door is completely closed by itself and then now you cannot if you have to go back to the you come to the entrance and then you go back to the western side and you see the lord through a hole that's a window they created and that's what it is how it is happening think about it if that mm-hmm. supreme lord is dear to him and he is he is truth and he is real and he is there for the devotees and think about this so this is what it is so lord is there lord is he is he is real he is the truth so he is the supreme lord for everybody so if we say that there are many gods yes there are many gods in the sense that they are appointed as their own specific functions that we call it as demi gods but who is the real supreme lord we also hindu there is only one god we also believe but there are so many confusions and misunderstanding people think that there are so many gods but there is only one god and that's you know yourself that is supreme lord shri krishna yes some people call him allah that's fine some people call him you know jehova that's fine some people call him bhagavad that's fine but the ultimate is what there is a supreme lord shri krishna thank you thank you prabhu ji clear my doubt thanks thank you anybody else has anything hari krishna babu sure uh, prabhu i have question regarding the krishna is avatar right and all are avatars uh, so regarding the avatar krishna came in dapur juga here in vrindavan mm-hmm. uh, gokul gokul vrindavan and goloka vrindavan this is nice staying there I mean, means when krishna came here krishna is everywhere because his his paramatma his his expansion is everywhere who is coming here that means he expanded here as a krishna or can you explain a little bit about that krishna is there already in goloka vrindavan as well as gokula vrindavan right yeah he he so he came can himself from dwapar yuga he came himself uh, but the other yugas he took uh, different avataras and he came so uh, yeah he came himself no yeah, okay, the, okay. the question of you is how lord can be here and everywhere right that's your question right proji yes. yes question is that uh, simultaneously he is staying in 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 goku Gok, golok vindavan and simultaneously is staying here or he came here or what is that can can you explain a little bit clearly wonderful very nice question uh, gopigan prabhu you want to go first or i will i will explain first yes prabhu uh, krishna can be anywhere any time even though um, krishna you cannot feel like that krishna is there in goloka yatra gayanti mad bhakta tatra tishtami narada wherever we are glorifying krishna he will come and stay here but especially if you take that uh, dwarka lila he came himself and he performed the leelas uh, like that krishna will go different different planets different different yugas as per the need as i said paritrana is adhuna and uh, he will perform his leelas and he will go back he is avatar he will come back from goloka and once his leela is over he will go back ava means top tari means down so to come down so he will come down from the 10th floor after the job is over he will go back now my question is that prabhu he yeah. come down here that means he was he was not staying there he is staying there right in staying in goloka as well there Yes, probably. Yeah, simultaneously, both the places. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the way we can explain that, Roji. Yes, uh, one day of Brahma. That means thousand yuga cycle. That's where the Krishna come as it is. 
that means Krishna comes down. I mean, so then the, your question is that what happens to the Gola Gurundavan? There is nothing will happen there. So this is where the the Krishna's real, uh, you know, he's, he's the supreme Lord. He's the superior. He's supreme, and he's. This is the where the real, um, you know, the 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 answer comes. That means Krishna's internal potency or the Yoga Maya. This Yoga Maya arranges all this. Even the pastimes in the Goloka Vrindavan, even the pastimes into the Bhuloka Vrindavan. And Bhuloka Vrindavan is an expansion or the same Vrindavan. It's, we cannot differentiate, differentiate the Goloka Vrindavan and the Bhuloka Vrindavan. It's same. So then question is that what happens to Goloka Vrindavan? It's the same. It's the Goloka Vrindavan and Bhuloka Vrindavan is same. Or some says it's an expansion of the Buloka Runda expands to the Buloka Rundavan, but it's same. So the past times which is happening, same past times happen in the Goloka Rundavan and the Buloka Rundavan. There's no difference. That's the same past time happens. But there is a little slight difference that in the Buloka Rundavan, there is, you know, Krishna is coming as a child, Krishna is coming as a, you know, killing lot of demons. But that never happens in the Goloka Rundavan. Goloka Vrindavan, he's always youthful form. He's always engaging into the... And who is arranging this? I mean, yesterday there was a question about the time. That I think you asked the question about time. In the in the Bhuloka in the, in the in the material world, there is a time. But what happens to the time in the, the you know, spiritual world? Yes, there is no time. Time is known as Kala or in the material world is known as Kala Shakti. But in the spiritual world, there is no time because there's no need of time. And why? Because of, there is no change. The change, the, the potency of the change is the Kala Shakti or the time factor. That's in the material world. But in the spiritual world, everything arranges by Yoga Maya, his internal potency himself. Everything arranges his own expand, his own internal potency called Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya arranges everything. So Krishna's will, but Yoga Maya arranges everything. So that's the same happens also. That means in the Goloka Vrindavan, Bhuloka Vrindavan, Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. That is a fact. So Ajarya says that Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Then we may ask the question, what happened to the Krishna went to Madhura, Krishna went to Dharaka. Yes, that is his immediate expansion called as Vasudeva. That's we saw that, you know, the Tadegatma Garupa, right? That Krishna is actually came as Vasudeva form. That's called Vasudeva Krishna. That means his immediate expansion, like, you know, uh, you know, that um, Krishna is again, is, 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 is expansions or plenary expansions of it. So that Vasudeva Krishna is actually, you know, went to Mathura or Dwaraka that we can see that from the story of Akrura. Akrura brought the Krishna and Balaram and came to the, in the border of the Mathura and the Gokul. There is a place where the Krishna, Akrura went for the uh, snan. There Krishna and could see that, you know, Krishna then transformed to the Vasudeva Krishna from there. And this we can see that. So that is also there. So Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Did I answer, answer the question? Yes, so very nicely you explained these things. I have another question, but time is over right now. Sorry for that, but uh, uh, I have another question regarding the Ladini and uh, Sandini and uh, Sambit. There is some three. Yes, Sandini three potency, Samrut potency, and Ladini potency. Yes. yes. And so those are the things I need, uh, need to know about, need to know in details. Later, Prabhu, I will ask you. Thank you, Prabhu, for explaining no clearly. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you, Gopi Babu and Srimashir Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't know what's Prabhu. Very nice. Okay, anybody else has anything to add? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Krishna? See, as I'm a beginner, Prabhuji. Okay. As you say, once if we come into the Krishna consciousness, so we are relied from the going to Yamaloka, whatever, who Yamaraj, when he is by, during our death time, Yamaraj comes and at the moment we hear Hare Krishna mantra, he will be not taking us to the Yamaloka. So if we keep on saying this Hare Rama, Hare Krishna mantra, for how many births till we, till we need to go? To... You go back to Krishna. Hare Krishna. Are you there? Hare Bol. Hare Krishna, are you there? Pramesh Prabhu, can you unmute? You are talking in the mute, it seems. Yeah, I think probably it's became uh, unmuted. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Hare, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yeah. So this is my question is, how many millions of births we will take on 
and when we will be going to spiritual world okay can yeah, i have perhaps, a uh, yeah sure srila prabhu the same questions some devotees some you know people ask the same questions to srila prabhu our founder acharya his divine grace is bhakti vedanta sanshala prabhu you know what was the answer srila prabhu the gave this lifetime you don't need to take millions of lifetime after this lifetime itself you can go back if you keep chant the holy name with your sincere with your pure intention that you develop gradually you develop love for the lord and then that love for the lord itself uh, takes back to krishna in this lifetime itself and if you are keeping that some material desires and hankering that i kind of you know uh, it depends how much degree of the material desires you have in your mind that i need to enjoy this i need to do this i need to do this then you know it depends on that that much lifetime but if we start like one percentage in this lifetime and this is eternal if you ch- if you say hare and if you say krishna this is eternal because of krishna is eternal his form is eternal his name is eternal his quality is eternal this is spiritual this is nothing to do with this material world so this we are talking about the spiritual potency spiritual name spiritual quality and spiritual attributes so these names qualities are all spiritual attributes just beyond this material qualities so this is pure and if you come in contact with the like we know that you know if you if you have some dirt in your body if you wash with the clean water it purifies it goes away and that's the nature of that the pure water or like we know that you know mercury if there is a gold or some other metals if you put it in the mercury that is can actually purify that metal right so there are yes, so sir. many things like that so krishna consciousness or the name of krishna the form of krishna the remembrance meditation all these are actually the the this this very purificatory this is eternal this not it belongs to this material world so if you come in contact with it that means you are come in contact with krishna that you are you are connecting with the krishna that is eternal that never goes away so if you do that one percentage or one or five percentage or one percentage this time so what you are going to get you are going to get a birth like that that means your consciousness will be that with krishna that means you have created an eternal relationship with the krishna in this lifetime so that never goes away so krishna says that in the bhagavad gita to arjuna krishna saying this to arjuna arjuna declare it boldly name bhakta pranakshyadi my devotee is never perishes this is a very wonderful meaning my devotee is never perishes never goes away never goes down and then he takes a birth if it is started with the five percentage in this life you are getting a birth accordingly that's krishna also mentioned that you get a family and you get a birth accordingly that you can develop from that five percentage then you may be developing that 10 percentage in your lifetime by means it's very what is called accumulating that means you know if you develop some good quality then that quality itself will you know support you dharma rakshati rakshatu that means if you follow the dharma dharma itself will protect you okay so then what happens then you develop from there and if you have developed that such a degree of that krishna consciousness in this life that keep chanting that shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam marchanam vandanam dasyam sakyam atmani vedanam this lifetime itself you can go back to krishna no need of millions of lifetime it's again of course it's up to us that what is our mood what is our intention what is our level of purity and yes it's possible that we can go back to god in this life itself that provided that we sincerely worship and sincerely develop the loving devotion to the supreme lord yes of course as sula brother mentioned that as the patma purana mentioned that in this age of kali harir nama harir nama harir nama eva kevalam kalau naste eva naste eva naste eva gadara nyada there is no other way there is no other way there is no other way you know accept the chanting of the holy name to attain the supreme lord especially in this age of kali yes you have a wonderful you have a wonderful um, you know uh, desire of wonderful intention of chanting the holy name keep chant the holy name definitely krishna will give a wonderful abode for you and krishna also proclaiming this in the you know mentioning this in the second chapter 40th verse um, it is mentioned that neko vikramana asosti pratyavayona vidhyade svalpam api asya dharmasya trayado magado bhayan even svalpam svalpam api asya dharmasya even if you practice little bit and from the prayado magado bhayan that means it will be relieved from you the greatest danger what is the greatest danger 
if you don't get a human birth next life that's the greatest danger that we can you never know that when you will be getting a human birth human birth is very rare to achieve people may think that there is so much of population 707 billions of but yeah what, yes what is nothing that's nothing compared to any other right so this is yes. exactly, you know this is what it is yes thank you oh, so good. much for uh, having that wonderful question thank you prabhu ji i have got it thank you prabhu ji hari krishna hari krishna thank you anybody else anything to add okay wonderful thank you uh, so ranesh prabhu just i would like to recommend you uh, you since you are a new person the krishna consciousness is a sadhana bhakti so you come come into the contact of one of us so they will uh, uh, guide you the next things and how to go forward in krishna consciousness thank, thank, thank you prabhu ji thank you yeah so, so hari krishna hari bol krishna hari bol hari bol thank you so much very nice and yes you are there you are part of this scheme i believe you get the this group prabhu ji how did you join krishna nama prabhu ji is my guru ji prabhu ji okay wonderful then nothing to worry yeah then uh, he will guide you he will guide you uh, just follow him thank you prabhu ji mm-hmm. hari krishna prabhu ji hari krishna okay so anything else Otherwise, let's uh, let's conclude. If nothing else, we'll uh, pass to Madhubadi Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Madhubadi Prabhu Ji. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Shemesh Vipul and Gopikanta Prabhu, for this nice session, session number three. Who is God? And <clears throat> wonderful discussions. So tomorrow we are going. To to have our day four why do uh, bad things happen to good people this entire theory of reincarnation laws of nature uh, <clears throat> laws of karma everything uh, would be discussed tomorrow uh, so please join in on the same Zoom ID, uh, 6.30 to 7 will be Kirtan, 7 to 9 will be discussion by Govinda Nandani Mataji and Kalindi Mataji. So, uh, yep. And as we have been mentioning, every day in the morning and evening, we have this Sata Sangha, 5 to 6.30 in the morning is a mantra meditation and 6.30 to 7 is a uh, Bhagavat, Bhagavatam discussion. So uh, you're most welcome to join. If you like a Zoom ID for that, please contact us or uh, we will also post it on the chat um, tomorrow. Yeah. If you are not in our email ID, uh, please post your, uh, you can send us a note. Uh, I'm just um, uh, info at iskonnj.com uh, or, or contact one of us uh, and we can give more detail. Thank you very much. Alrighty. We'd like to offer, like, you know, normally we always end our session by offering obeisances to all the assembled. All of you are Vaishnavas that you are spending your valuable time hearing about the Supreme Lord. That's the quality of a Vaishnava. So we'd like to offer our humble obeisances to all of you by this wonderful prayer. Vancha Kalpatam Kalpatam
थैंक यू प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी थैंक यू प्रभु जी थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सुमेश्वर प्रभु गोपीकांत प्रभु वेरी नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन फॉर ब्लेसिंग्स एंड सपोर्ट दैट्स ऑल ब्लेसिंग्स जय प्रभु